What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna be talking about CRUD commands in MongoDB. And this is probably the most important video in the whole entire series. Like if you don't watch another sing if you don't watch any other video and you just watch this one, you could probably get away with working in a production environment just on this video alone. If you're gonna be an analyst or you want to be like a MongoDB nerd like me and you want to be like really good, continue watching. But if you just kind of want to get you know, in the game and you just want to start, you know, working on stuff, this is probably the only video that you need to watch. So CRUD stands for create, update, delete. And I'm assuming if you're a software developer or any other type of, you know, person in IT, you probably have heard of CRUD. And at the end of the day, all apps are CRUD. Even Facebook and Google is literally just CRUD. So if you can memorize this and whenever you are working on a MongoDB, whenever you're work, working in MongoDB, just remember that all of these commands usually have three basic parts. There's certain um, you know, commands that can be more complex, but really all MongoDB commands have this right here. They have three parts. They have the database, they have the collection, and then they have the actual command. And since we're crudding, we're gonna do create first, and the very first command is going to be an insert. Sorry if that um, is a little messy right there. So DB collection insert. DB is the DB. And I will show you how to go through 3T or Compass if you're using Compass and kind of look in here and be like, well, hmm, what do I actually need to be able to, you know, what am I actually trying to insert? Or how do I find like what I actually want to insert into? So these are the databases you got admin local these are all databases so if we go back here we go back to the whiteboard this is the database it always has db i don't really know like i've read a bunch of books on mongodb i it's always db this is static this is never going to change and if you, this is messy for you you can also look over here as well too there's an example then we have collection collections a little bit more nuanced so within our databases, and you can always, like even SQL has this structure. If you look over here to the left and you drop down, you will see collections. You also see views and you see grid FS, and you see uh, system, but don't worry about that for now. Underneath here, you can see our actual collections. And if you drop down, if you come from the SQL world, you may be used to seeing the columns drop down, but because MongoDB is schemaless, it's not going to do that for you. So if you just want to use the GUI and you just want to quickly see what's in these collections, so we're now we're in collections. Now here, and if you notice, this stuff looks like JavaScript. And I think that the MongoDB engine is actually built on JavaScript. So you have your, you has three parts. You have your DB, you have your collection, and then you have your insert. So let's go ahead, let's go in here and let's find which DBs. Let's find our DBs and before we actually do our insert, it's also very important that I teach you guys how to navigate through all of this if you don't have a GUI. If you have a GUI, you can quickly go in and you can um, you know, look at stuff, but it's also good just to know this too because you can quickly just go in here and look at all your DBs. So let's distinguish the difference between a db and a collection so we're going to go in here oh sweet we've got all of our stuff right here and if you're using 3t or if you're using compass you don't have to do this but still good to know and then you can also get like a uh how much information is contained within one of these so let's go in here oh wow that's great so now we can see all of our databases now another and very important aspect of mongodb that you need to realize is that you need to select which DB that you're actually using. If you're in a different DB, so if I'm executing commands and for some reason it's not working right, it's because you have, you, and this is SQL as well too, you actually have to select the actual database that you want to use. And I think MongoDB, you know, actually borrowed this from uh, SQL Server. So you go in here, then we go to use sample and now we've actually switched to the sample Airbnb uh, uh, database. And that's very important because if you're not in the right DB and you start doing work, it's going to say that you're not inserting and it's gonna say all these things. But now that we are switched to the sample Airbnb, 
let's go ahead and go do a actual command. We're gonna insert. We're gonna do our very first CRUD action. We're gonna do an insert. So we're gonna go in here. We're gonna go sample. And 3T will give you a little bit of IntelliSense, but I guess it's not going to this time. So next thing we want to do, like I said, we want to do an insert. So MongoDB is very flexible. And in this example, we're gonna go in here. We've already done, we've already switched to our database command. I'm just gonna kind of zoom in here. So you could just do this. And I think the very simplest of simple I could possibly show you is we could just go in here, we can insert a Pikachu into our Airbnb database. <laughs> Being little jokers out here. And we want to just insert one document that's literally just going to be Pokemon and it's going to say Pikachu. This is terrible. If we worked at Airbnb, we would immediately be fired if we did this. Do not do this. We're just being, you know, we're just being little jokers out here. So what we're going to do, like I said, go inside DB, we're going to go inside our collection, we're going to do insert, and then we're going to insert pretty much the smallest document that you could possibly ever insert. And congratulations. When you do a correct insert, what you will see down in the raw shell, they call it the raw shell, is you're going to see the right result. And it's going to say you inserted one. So what do we do now? Well, obviously we want to go in and we want to look at our data and that's what's going to bring us to our read. It's another, you know, this is kind of like very real world. So we just inserted into our database. Now we want to do a read and read literally looks just like this. And you have same exact structure. You have your DB, you have your collection, and then you have a find. And we're going to do the very simplest one because I'm actually going to do a deep dive on the find. So if you want to do a find, you just go in here and find. And it brings up our very first one and it's that's all that we have. So we, we have sample Airbnb and we inserted it. We actually created our own collection here. So we go in here, I'm going to see, refresh, and we were able to find our Pokemon. and. Would you look at that? That is so beautiful. We can now see all of our beautiful data and we are good to go. But you also want, let's, let's just say you want more functionality and you want to be able to actually insert other things into the data. You want to be able to insert more. We need to have a more complex scenario. We can't just have, like I said, we can't just insert Pikachu, one Pikachu into the airbnb database we need to insert more so we actually we made a collection called sample airbnb and that is definitely not what you want to do but what we want to do is we want to insert into our listings and reviews so let's just go into here and we want to go into this this database and we want to insert into this collections of listing and reviews and we want to insert it and Another fun fact is that when you right click and you open the IntelliShell, 3T is going to show you this. It's going to give you the Git collection and it's going to have this. But in fact, these are actually the same. So Git collection is synonymous with this. So we go Git collection, Git collection, and we go listings and reviews. And for some reason, it, it we you go listings and reviews. And this is actually synonymous with this so git collection is the exact same thing and a lot of times people prefer git collection because if you have uh, like weird characters or if you have like weird keywords you can also have that as well too but literally the exact same thing so what we want to do is we want to insert many so what we want to do is we want to go in here go right here and we need to insert it pretty much like Jason. So we're going to go pokey and we can do this. I think this, this will look a little bit better. It actually doesn't matter. It's just kind of like an, an aesthetic thing. We're going to go in here then we'll go Pokemon and we will insert a Squirtle and then we'll go down here. And these are going to be two entirely different records because remember we are inserting um, 
we are inserting many. And then we're going to insert a Pikachu. And boom, that's pretty much it. Run it. And saying this is not, we've got some type of, oh, we need to have brackets because this is an array. Remember, uh, whenever you are, it's, it's very similar to JSON. If you have more than one, you need to put brackets around it because it is an array. So we're gonna go in here and when we you insert many, you get this thing back from the shell output that tells you the object IDs of the um, listings and reviews that you actually selected. So we go in here and now we have all of our, we've inserted our Pokemon into this. And you may be wondering, this is another knowledge bomb. This is another like, gotcha. MongoDB lets you insert like literally anything into the database. You could insert a uh, like up to 60 megabits of data. I think it's like 60 megabits. You can insert it and it doesn't even t it like there's literally no rules. It's it's 100 percent schemeless. And I think that there's only one thing. There's the only restriction is that it has to be less than 60 megabits. Don't quote me on that, but I think I read the document documentation. That's like the only restriction when you're actually inserting things. So now what we want to do is let's go ahead and let's go find it. We're going to, like I said, we're going to be very real world and we are going to go find our Pokemon and we're going to go find our Pikachu. And what we want to do, go over to listings, reviews, double click. Then we're going to go over here and we're going to find our Pokemon. And we are going to find... Pikachu and let's see if we can find it great and we found our Pokemon and our Pikachu we've successfully done a create command and we've also done a read command so the next thing that we want to do obviously is we are going to start worrying about updating update is another one that you are going to want to learn because when you're working, you need to go in a lot of times and you need to update particular documents. You know, you're testing something and you messed up a, you know, a value and you need to go back and change it so that you can do some type of work. And update is not complicated at all, but it is the most complicated of the CRUD commands. And once again, we'll walk through it. It'll be very simple. Uh, just break it down piece by piece. So we go in here. Once, same thing, we have the DB, we have the collection, then we have update. And with update, you're probably not going to see an update mini. I think update mini exists, but update mini is not a very common command. And I, like, I've never used it, and I don't see anybody else teaching it as well, too. So we'll just talk about good old update, which you will use. So update just... It kind of makes sense. You need to be able to, number one, you have to find the record that you look, you're looking for. You have to like actually go out and find it because you can't just update any willy-nilly records. You have to find the record that you want to update. And then you need to choose which part of the key value pairs that you want to update. So in this one, we go in and let's just say we're going back into our Airbnb sample data. And let's just say we don't like this for some reason and we want to go in and change it before we actually go in and change it one other thing that you need to be aware of is you want to be aware of things called modifiers so modifiers come in all different shapes and forms and they're typically denoted by the um dollar sign symbol so if you see the dollar sign symbol it's indicative of a uh, a modifier and if you're looking for different ways to update set is going to be the most common in which you're going to be using 99% of the times but if you want to use a more complicated version of that uh, you could you could google other update modifiers but let's go ahead let's go in and let's go to this uh, value right here and let's go in and change it so we want to change this one. For some reason, we don't like to be happy in Porto, or let's just say we want to add an exclamation mark to be happy in Porto. What we want to do is we want to copy this right here. We want to get our ID, 
And you could find it by other ways. Like if you wanted to find it by, um, I don't know, like this right here. Like if you wanted to put in that, I don't know why you would want to do that. You could, but for, let's just keep things simple and let's not, you know, try and reinvent the wheel. And let's go in here to the IntelliShell and let's go ahead and do an update. So every update has two parts. It's more complicated. It's more complicated than an insert and a find because, like I said, it ha you have to be able to find it. So if you want to be able to find it, the very first per parameter, and if you look here, you can see where it, it tells you that there's two parameters. So we go in here. Let's see. Maybe it's not going to do it for us. So we go go in here. What we want to do is once you type in the ID, then we are going to copy and paste this into here so we're going to go in here and that is what's going to find it for us but now we also want to set remember that we wanted to go in here and we wanted to actually update it so we're going to go in here remember your curly braces so we go here we go set and it gives us a nice some nice little intellisense then we go in here and we go and actually add what we want to um adjust so for this make sure you got your colon and we're going to adjust the name so we're going to go name and be happy in Porto and we're going to give it an exclamation mark and for some reason here I believe that I don't have a curly brace yep so I don't have a curly brace so let's go here and make sure that this is right and we're going to go ahead and run the update and would you look at that it went ahead and updated it for us now let's go back and let's check it out let's see if it actually updated it boom we actually have our be happy in porto updated now we're kind of <laughs> we're gonna be a little crazy now we don't let's just say we don't i don't even want i don't want to be happy in porto and i don't even want to have that record in there you are down at airbnb and you just decide that you are the data god and you are going to go ahead and you're going to delete these same thing you have your db you have your account then you have a, your remove and that is going to delete it so what do you actually pass into here what you're going to pass in is more than likely an id so or a file what you are using to actually find the record. So you go over here, we're going to go and we've already actually got our ID here. That works out really good. And we can just go in here. Then we go into here. We have our remove and look, our telesense come up, comes up, removes document from a collection. And what you, you have is you just have the query that you want to delete. You can also specify just one. So if you wanted to go in here and maybe you had multiple ones and you just wanted to just delete one you could also specify just one but that's you like i said you don't really use it that much and then uh really what you want to do is you just want to just have um put in the id so we're going to go in here we're going to go remove and it removed it so let's go ahead let's check did it remove it go ahead click and congratulations our welcome to porto or whatever be happy in porto has been deleted and we have officially learned all of the crud commands you're officially a mongodb data master you are a data god pat yourself on the back and in the next video we're going to be talking about advanced filtering we're going to be going deep diving into find which is going to be another very important aspect of learning mongodb Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.